We hear many different things about Palantir. We hear that this stock will dominate NVIDIA. We hear ARK Invest's Kathy Woods say in her interview that it will disrupt Microsoft and reach $500 per share if you hang tight. Some people on social media even recommend selling NVIDIA and getting into Palantir. I understand investors' excitement about Palantir. It is an AI company and we are going through an AI boom. But the reality is not that exciting about Palantir. It does not make any reasonable investment sense at this time. Let me explain. For long-term investments, I like to take positions in stocks that may bring me a 10x return. If I must take a substantial financial risk, I better find a stock offering a substantial return in exchange. Even though Palantir is selling at under $25, it is a very risky stock that is also insanely expensive. You see, investing long-term needs some fundamental analysis on your part. You need to look into the basic information of a stock before putting your hard-earned money into it. What do we see if we do that in the case of Palantir? First of all, Palantir's market cap is over $50 billion. I like to invest in companies that are around $20 billion. If you want Palantir to bring you a 10x return, you need to add another $500 billion to its market cap. That is not impossible. But the possibility of that happening is very low, and the time frame for that kind of gain may be very long, perhaps decades, not years. Palantir has to overtake Tesla's current market cap of $515 billion to give you a 10x return. But you already know that Palantir is not Tesla, and Palantir's CEO, Alex Karp, is not Tesla Motors' CEO, Elon Musk. How many of you have heard about Alex Karp, and how many of you have heard about Elon Musk? I don't consider Palantir anywhere near as groundbreaking as Tesla. The other point that seriously discourages me from investing in Palantir is its dangerously high share float. A company's float indicates the number of its shares available for trading by the public. Tesla's float is 2.77 billion shares. That is after a 3 to 1 split, actualized on August 25th, 2022. Tesla is now selling at $161 per share. That is a 59% decline from its all-time high. In comparison, Palantir already has about as many as 2 billion shares available for trading by the public. I like stocks that have under 100 million share floats. It is better if the float is under 50 million or even under 20 million. If you are into growth stocks, you must understand a stock's float to the full. You do not want a lot of stocks to be available in the market for trading. A smaller float means faster and higher growth. On the contrary, the higher the float is, the more money you need to raise the price of a stock. Look at MicroStrategy. The stock grew a staggering 500% within the last six months. From $320 per share, it has risen to $1,750 recently. It has a float of only 15 million shares. That means it has 133 times less number of shares in circulation than Palantir, but its share price is about 70 times higher than where Palantir is trading today. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Another stock we can look at to understand actually how insane the float of Palantir is. You must have recently noticed the astounding rise of supermicrocomputers in the tech sector. The stock rose from $250 per share in December 2023 to $1,190 in March 2024. That is about 375% growth within the last four months. The stock has an excellent 47 million share float. Buying super microcomputers at $250 per share makes more investment sense than buying Palantir at $25 per share considering the insanely large float Palantir has. Besides, what will happen if suddenly Palantir decides to go through a 3 to 1 split? 2 billion shares will become 6 billion shares available for trading. That is ridiculous. That is like a cryptocurrency being pumped and dumped speculatively during any crypto bull market, its creators, investors, and traders not knowing what they are doing. You will need to add a hectic $6 billion to Palantir's market cap to raise its stock price by only $1. Let us make another interesting comparison. We all know Intel Corporation, or INTC. It is a renowned tech company which has been around for ages. Do you think Palantir is more groundbreaking than what Intel was at its beginning? I don't think so. But that is not what I am looking at for now. Now I am looking at the float of Intel. 
Intel has 4.22 billion shares available for trading, compared to Palantir's 2 billion shares. However, Intel had undergone a 2 to 1 share split in the meantime, which means it had just over a 2 billion share float before the split, where Palantir is sitting today. Interestingly enough, during Intel's life, NVIDIA has risen from a mere 38 cents, not $38, per share to $900 per share today. In comparison, Intel has risen from $28 to $43 per share in the last 20 years. You all know that at a 10% return per year, the S&P 500 has gained over 200% in the last 20 years compared to Intel's terrible 46% return. I see Palatier going the Intel way simply because of its crazy float. It may rise to $55 to $60 one day, making it a company with over $100 billion market cap. I don't see anything beyond that. I believe Palantir is a seriously greedy company. They do not understand the interests of investors like you and me. They issued billions of shares to make it a big company. If they were confident about their products and services, they would have kept their float within a respectable number. They could still enjoy huge growth having a huge market cap. By issuing billions of shares, they wanted to make the share price appear cheap so that investors less informed about the market fell into their trap. This is not financial advice, but I will not invest in Palantir. I may take a small position in it, not more than 2% of my portfolio, if only if Palantir's market cap declines to below $20 billion due to unforeseen circumstances like recession or market crash. That is, when the stock trades at close to $10 per share, not before that. Are you a Palantir investor? What kind of return do you expect from your investment and over what period? Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel for more money and investment-related videos. Thank you.